Let's talk a little bit about the Northern Lights, the reason that Steve and I came up to Alaska. There are rods and cones in your eyes. The cones see color in the daytime. Rods see black and white at night. That is why you can't differentiate the colors of the Northern Lights. But don't think that you're going to see those magnificent pictures with the greens and the pinks and the orange and maybe even reds. You go outside and perhaps there are some little wispy gray clouds going by. If you can see stars through them, it very well be the Northern Lights. It's only through the camera lens that you pick up the colors of the Northern Lights unless they are extremely strong and vivid. You snap a shot of what you think is a little gray wispy cloud and go, oh my God, it's green, it's the Northern Lights. It was crystal clear Sunday night and I thought for sure we'd see the Northern Lights. No such luck. They did not want to make an appearance even though I ran in and out umpteen million times. So wonderful. I have not seen stars like that since the two of us went to Pisco del El Key in Chile. To... But as a consolation prize, there must have been billions of stars in the sky. It was strictly for stargazing. I mean, I, it was a, really a bonus to stand out there and see the Big Dipper and the Northern Star, the Milky Way, and the billions of others that I wouldn't be able to tell you what they are. If you're serious about looking for the Aurora, I go to quite a few different websites, but this shows the oval as it starts heading across to where you are. This, the thicker the band, the more powerful it is. Then I have three different aurora forecasts that I try to check. This one shows the green is the aurora approaching Alaska. A forecast showing cloud cover tonight, which keeps changing. Before it was only at 50%, now it's much higher. The optimum time to search is usually between 10 and 2. Equipment. One thing that I learned the very hard way is you need a 35 millimeter camera set on manual, a wide angle lens, and the most important part, a tripod. Don't even attempt to take serious Northern Lights photos without a tripod. As I said, I've learned all this the hard way when I stood there with my little point-and-shoot camera trying to take any decent picture of the Northern Lights and everybody around me was snapping away with their tripods and getting gorgeous, gorgeous photos. Is it on red? Yes. Okay. The aurora that we saw up here in Talkeetna was a diffuse aura. It's basically just a featureless glow in the sky. The only reason I thought that perhaps it was the aurora was all of a sudden the dark sky lightened up and there were what looked like wispy, lighter clouds going that way and that way and around there. And sure enough, when I photographed it, a tinge of green showed up to prove that yes, it was the aurora. You also have to know, if you're going aurora hunting, prepare for extreme sleep deprivation. As a matter of fact, I may pop a sleeping pill when I get home to sync up my body again. Prepare to go outside between 10 until 2 in the morning. The aurora usually appears closer to midnight but you have to go back and forth because the aurora can last for seconds or it can last for hours. It is one of the creations that is worth going through all the trouble to see. It is 
beyond amazing and I strongly encourage you to make a trip and see the Aurora if you can once in your life and don't go just for one day you could be extremely lucky and see the Aurora but I always plan for at least five to seven days to give me a little edge on the percentages. Steve and I have been Aurora hunting now for 10 years and so far we have seen the Aurora every time we've gone because we're willing to stay for at least a week. Thanks so much for watching Travels with Sheila and please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.